So we're back for hour two. Um, oh, yeah. Active, it's fog and fog. But okay, I didn't actually see that, but that's great, Bill. Yeah, uh, stops and starts quickly. Um, I've seen quite a few things on making multiple uh, clipboards. Um, I I did something very similar when I first started using Arachi of using control one, control two, and stuff like that to copy multiple things. And is it is it actually built into Windows 10 now, the idea of having multiple clipboards? Yeah, I was gonna say it Windows V will bring it up, right? It it has a clipboard history that you can actually paste from. Which it's not a very good implement. Isaiah and I were talking about, we want to create our own because it, how it works and everything is just not, when you pin something, it doesn't actually stay like, you know, at the top, you got to go scroll for it. And that, there's some things and you have to use the space bar to select it, which to me is not intuitive at all. Um, but yes, you're right, Jackie, it's built into Windows 10 now. And if you don't have to hit Windows V, and if you haven't enabled it yet, it'll say, hey, do you, are you trying to use this? You can check this box and enable it. And then from there forward, you'll have a, like a his, history of your clipboard. It, it, it's better than nothing. It's better than nothing. Yeah, that might be a good way of putting it. So it's, it's not as customizable as one would wish for it to be. But you does actually have your pictures, you know, it, it keeps the file, the format. So it'll have pictures, it'll have your rich text, it'll have the text, it'll have whatever you've copied to the clipboard. The, the one of the interesting, that's what we've looked at it. That's where Jean, I know Jean and I have looked at it years ago too, a couple of years ago now, of understanding how the clipboard works. And more importantly, it's how each program uses the clipboard. So when you copy something, if you're in a certain program and you hit copy, it will copy a plain text version, a rich text version, maybe an HTML version, all to the clipboard of the one thing. And then depending on what you paste into, that program will choose, you know, it's designated format. If it has that, if not, then, oh, we'll use this one. If not, then we'll use this one. Now, programs like Word allow you now to, to do a paste special and kind of choose, but, you know, that's newer, but, um, it's why it makes it so complicated when you start doing the stuff, just besides also shoving things into the clipboard with HTML or rich text is much more complicated than just plain text. I'd say, uh, Ali, you, you posted uh, a small snippet here in the chat about um, maybe using on clipboard change instead of uh, maybe clip weight. I'm not sure it depends on whichever situation you have. I can just say when using clip weight correctly, as it says in the documentation, I've never had an issue with it. Never in 10 years of using it. It's a matter of making sure that the clipboard is empty before you put something in because clip weight is made to always wait until the clipboard holds data. So if you haven't cleared it before, it won't wait. Yeah, Why Mark. Wait? There's something there already. Mark, are you aware of the the, the clip weight command that Jackie, the other one that Jackie's referring to? I had heard of it and and wondered about that, and and that's what I wondered, Jackie. There's something already in there, so how does it? You know what I mean? But but if I if I clear it first and then say clip weight, it will wait yeah. until something's in there to yeah. paste. What you sure do is you you store clipboard all, then you clear the clipboard then you fill something new into it, and then you use clip weight. But okay. you won't need to use clip weight in that situation. The only time you need to use clip weight is when you send a copy or a clip or a cut. Because uh, filling the clipboard is again, programmatically a Windows function is used to actually fill the clipboard. So unless something very weird happens, uh, the data should just be there. Um, so, yeah. so the clip weight makes sense when you're sending a copy command to a program. Yeah, that was actually why I, I was going to mention you might want to use clip weight. Then I realized exactly what Jackie said was, well, you're not, you're programmatically setting the clipboard, so it's not going to be an issue. But if let's say you received an email from a prospect, you know, someone looking for a job and you wanted to say, oh, I'm going to double click on his name and hit my, my hotkey. And it's going to programmatically send Control C to copy that to the clipboard, 
that's when you'd want to be using that clip weight to make sure it gets put on your clipboard before. And the great thing is, I don't know if Jackie quite said that is like, it will wait and you can tell how long to wait. The weird part is it's like in seconds instead of milliseconds, which I think it's the only one I'm aware of that without a hockey that's in seconds, which whatever, but it will, um, this, the very instance, the clipboard has something in it, it moves forward. So it doesn't add a second of a wait. It just says, wait until the clipboard has contents and move forward. So it's a really great programmatic way to streamline what you're doing. Yeah, and if you set it to say, let's say it's supposed to wait one second or two seconds or however long, and for some reason that time runs out, you can use um, uh, error level to, to check if it happened. Yeah, that's what Jean mentioned that, that he does is he watches that error level and says, oh, wait a minute, nothing got put on the clipboard. I want to, you know, let them know that or, you know, or just at least not keep going forward. Yeah. You guys, I do have to run because I have a client I was supposed to call two minutes ago. Fair Thank enough. you for this. This is amazing. Thanks, yeah. Mark. Appreciate it. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Uh, I was going to say, this is exactly why I told you to use that on, on clip change function because you don't have any problem with, with wait. You don't have to wait, okay? You don't have to clear your clipboard, and that's the that's the fun stuff with it. And it's interesting if you if you copy something, if you if you copy the same thing again, it still triggers that that function. So I had a lot of problem using that that clip wait, but I don't have any problem using that clipboard. It works like one hundred percent all the time. This, this is very awesome. You should, you should try it. This is different. I mean, the, the different functionality, but the functionality that I wanted was, you know, it worked with uh, on, on clipboard change. I don't know how clip weight is made in the source, but it could already be utilizing on clipboard change. Mm -hmm. Just a guess. It, uh, it might be waiting for a change event to happen and then checking if the clipboard has content. And if it does, stop waiting. I, I don't know, it might. But yeah, if, if you have had good luck with on clipboard change, keep using that. Uh, clipboard change, you already have something in your clipboard. If you change that clipboard, that triggers that function. So you don't have to like uh, delete anything or you don't have to change your clipboard or make it or wait for something to happen. That that works great. It's good knowledge. All right, does anyone else have anything else they're working on, want to share, even if you're not stuck on something? Dimitri, you're silent, man. Usually you got something you're working on. Okay, <laughs> that's a good chat point. Hello, uh, good evening. Hey, Dimitri. Um, yeah, I was working on uh, the Comen Inspector. Oh, cool. Yes, I'll show you what I got until now. Uh, I need to just run some more. It is actually, uh, yeah, we could call it the web off of the IE learner tool. <laughs> right. And we we try to uh, actually uh, Joe and uh, uh, Joe started it, and I uh, said, "Oh, that's cool. Could you? How far are you on working it?" And uh, he said, uh, "Yeah, we have done some work on it, but." Uh, it doesn't work that perfect yet uh, and uh, I could try it out and then I tried it and I saw directly oh it doesn't work I tweaked it a little bit so it began working and then I yeah it, well, it had little hiccups here and there where it gets stuck <laughs> in a loop right is in, in Isaiah's yeah it was my idea but Isaiah's is the one working on it FYI because I this is way above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, but yeah. So why don't you go and demonstrate it? Okay. Um, um, 
I'll just close it. Uh, so for, for those who are like new to web scraping, is that there's a, a tool called like the IWB2 learner tool, which is you know used by a lot of people in IE. And it's especially when you're new to web scraping, it's very convenient to give you a limited amount of information when you're trying to do web scraping. The developer tools are all great, but they give you so much information, it gets it really hard to kind of focus in on what you want when you're new at it. When you're when you're a developer, it's easy, but when you're new, it's just overwhelming. So that's what the IWB tool tools simplifies it. And I said, hey, can we make something like that in Chrome? So that, that's where this came from. Yeah, okay. It's just simple. It uh, starts up uh, the automator almost automatically uh, to get a little uh, advertisement for uh, the great web. <laughs> And uh, yeah, then you click it and you, you get directly the parent structure. Um, I changed it a little bit because first it, it went uh, with a, a correct tree, it went down, but the disadvantage is then you lose a lot of space. So now this element has the, all those parents, yeah. Um, I also added some inner text that's all, always useful to, to be shown. And I, I also try to uh, let you be able to use another element to see the information of that. I'm not, still not sure how we should visualize all the attributes because for me, uh, an idea class those are all attributes. So maybe we, I will change it into a, a list. Um, also to be able to copy the idea or the, or the class, I think it's useful. And I tried actually to, to create a selector for it. Um, yeah, sometimes I, I use uh, uh, AK Studio to give me some extra information. So it tries to uh, to define a, a selector. For example, if you have an ID, it's quite easy. Uh, use elements, then you see it just use a simple selector path. But if uh, it doesn't as an ID, it's a little bit trickier but it also works. And one uh, thing we encountered was that if you uh, connect a lot to Chrome, uh, Chrome.rk actually doesn't work as stable if you fire a lot of questions. So I started to uh, change it, changing our way of work that we would collect all the data uh, in JavaScript, in one JavaScript, and then just paste it all together. And then uh, we send it back to AutoHotKey and uh, we split it all up. And yeah, then you have the outer HTML of the elements and also the whole uh, tree structure of the elements above it. That's actually uh, the idea. <laughs> So every time you do it, you're getting everything at once is what you're saying. Is that correct? So yes. So you don't have to keep going back and pulling more things. Yes. Uh, one other thing that I encountered here in the code of uh, Chrome.aak, I saw that the sometimes uh, there was in a call. Yeah, I know, Isaiah, because we, we talked a lot about this thing, and, and it was the, the Chrome library itself was um, giving us issues, not what Isaiah was doing. It was Chrome, would get, the Chrome class itself was getting in these infinite loops and getting hung up. Yeah, somewhere inside it, I, I tweaked it a little bit. To, you, the Chrome to class, though, or the, that's what I was just trying to understand. Yes, the Chrome class, because um, it got stuck in, inside a loop. I, I think it's maybe this one. I'm not sure. And to be able to not freeze the whole program, you just 
need to accept that you don't get any response and then you just say, okay, we'll continue and we accept that mm -hmm. there was an error. Uh, it's not that pretty, but <laughs> it works. Then you, your whole program doesn't freeze. That's my idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it would be even better to, to have a better solution, but <laughs> sometimes if, if you yeah, don't, do not get any response, it's better just to say, okay, we failed and we'll, right. yeah. At least you can move forward, yeah. Yes, that's true, that's true. Um, for the rest, uh, I also love to, to add uh, some explanation here beneath when you use a QEI. I, I find it very, yeah, it's, it's very professional. Now, you mentioned something about the class. I didn't understand what you said when you were talking about the class. You mentioned something about when the, we're like, right, where it says entry dash content. You said something about it when you. Yeah, actually, uh, when when you are web scraping, um, when you define a selector, it's quite easy if you you find the element with an ID. Sure. That's quite easy. Here beneath you, you see a, a hashtag for got, uh, for bottom. That's the ID. So it's quite easy to pinpoint the ID. But if um, you do not have any ID, uh, for example, this one, yeah, it just takes the, the first diff. I think there's only one diff in this case. But for this one, for example, yeah, you get the selector. Um, I was just working on it, and then I encountered actually uh, an error in my uh, ways because I thought that uh, in HTML every element has at a, a end tag, but apparently it isn't so. I can uh, show you. For example, here you you see that uh, br element it doesn't have right. an yeah. end tag, and also image apparently it it doesn't has one. And that uh, caused my uh, program to uh, uh, actually. I I wanted to build up the the tree. Uh, this one just based on the outer HTML, mm -hmm. but uh, it did not take took into account uh, uh, this. Uh, so I'll need to rewrite it a little bit. <laughs> But you, you mentioned something about, I, maybe it's irrelevant, but I, I thought you said something about class that you were going to change something about class, I thought, or something. And I said, I just didn't understand what the. I, I changed the uh, Chrome.ak uh, class a little bit to be able to, to skip the, uh, the freezing, uh, to, to be able to break the loop. Okay. You know, when you I'm were, not sure if, if you remember where again. that was, Dimitri. Um, have have you actually posted it as an issue or anything like that on Geek Dude's um, GitHub? Just I, I saw it. it was, I saw it was uh, already mentioned on GitHub, but they didn't okay. found any solution. But even I, I actually don't, do not like the solution, <laughs> but when you do not have any other way, yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, it's the, this. Yeah, it, it seems as if it ends the, the loop when it gets to 500, yeah. Yeah, but... Even this isn't correct. It's maybe I should better to, to put in a, an exit. Cool. But uh, yeah, I'm still working on it. And even this still freezes. So, uh, but 
but it's it's an interesting project uh, to work on. Okay. And uh, I was amazed. I, I actually do not really fully understand uh, the the concept of call <laughs> in the in the Chrome class. Uh, maybe somebody could explain it a little bit better to me. Of of you of call is that what you said? Yes, of call. Yeah, I don't know, if, Isaiah. Do you have anything to add to that? I know he's been pretty entwined in this. Um, he may be also having uh, compete his his uh his you know, the thing is that I'm having a lot of issues with my internet right now. My internet is too slow, so everything that I hear is very delayed. So <laughs> you know. Yeah. In any case, well, uh, I would, I, I can, I did not understand exactly everything that went on, so I, I rather not comment right now. So, yeah, <laughs> the thing is that things are, yeah, I, it has been cutting out, in and out. So, you know, I'm here, but I cannot understand everything. Yeah. But, I'd say the call is what you do when you call the method, right? So, um, that that's that's the fastest way it is the general specified way you enter into to the chrome class when you call it then stuff like this happens right yes but in my i i think there was something wrong with the, the call function that sometimes it gets stuck in a loop and i think i do not have a lot of issue with the evaluate function that's actually works quite quite well. But I, I find it an, an amazing class, but uh, it's sometimes hard to understand all of it. I, I know when I talked to GeekTube when we made like roughly eight videos kind of diving into using the Chrome class that um, I think it was off camera, we were talking about it and he's like, yeah, if if I had, he would, you know, of course he's still, he's, you know, still learning, right? And He's like, if I had the bigger picture of everything when I first started writing this, I would have done things very differently. Um, and so there's some stuff. The problem is he's, you know, got eight million things he's doing and he works full time. And um, he, he just graduated college, I believe. And then he's working full time now. In a, so he's just really busy. But um, yeah, at least you see that on his GitHub page has had almost no entries on there for a few months now. Um, but hopefully someday we'll get it working a little more reliable. I know I was talking to Isaiah and, and he actually wanted to dive back into uh, Selenium. And I'm like, at first I was like, no, because I got so excited when Chrome came to be. But we have had several projects we've made with Chrome and have had running into these issues of the, the just the, it being buggy, Chrome, the, the class itself just getting in these infinite loops and we can't really program around it. Um, considering at some point going back to Selenium or just diving deeper into the UI automation, you know, ACC approach to doing things, which is very, very promising in the sense of it can peek into, you know, Chrome or almost like any program and, and do a lot of the stuff. Hmm. Um, it's just really advanced and we got a bucket a couple of weeks where Isaiah's could just focus on that. Um, but I know him and I are both like going, man, that, that would be amazing if we could get into that. Was there anything else with that, Dimitri, or, or something else you wanted to mention? Um, no, uh, I also done some some web scraping, and then I found it quite interesting that, um, by my experience, if you need to web scrape a lot of pages, then it's uh, I would almost always recommend the HTTP request. That's a lot of faster so, than than actually using a browser. Yeah, and that's what we've been working on uh, as ASNI and I is, is using like Fiddler or Fiddler Everywhere to monitor our traffic, you know, use the browser to to do something, look at the traffic it generates and then re, you know, watch watch it in Fiddler or whatever tool and then recreate it with uh, AutoHockey using a WinHTTP request because you can basically mimic everything it's doing. Uh, and uh, the, the, the biggest part what we were working on was a way to kind of simplify 
the really great thing that, that Jackie actually showed me a, a more advanced way to do it was uh, with the XML HTTP request, you can leverage your IE cookies, right? Which is really cool. But what Jackie showed me was not only that, but you could literally with IE, you can connect to the IE page and send that XML request from that page. And so wherever you're connected to, they have no clue that you are, you know, faking it, right? Because you're actually coming from the browser. So you don't have to deal with all the OAuth, you know, all that authentication stuff, which can be a headache. Um, it's it's a much better approach. So we're trying to do something similar to that with Chrome um, or just like you said, negate the whole thing, but leverage your browser's login and then do everything with the WinHTTP requests. And actually, I I, find, I got a, a quite a, a nice uh, story on that. Uh, at one time, I uh, I got some text back, and it was literally uh, stop web scraping my page. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then I thought, oh damn! Now I need to to use uh, yeah a browser. Uh, yeah. But, but then I also added uh, an extra line to to uh, pretend that I would I'm using a browser, and then I got uh, just a page. Uh, so, um, you, you know, honestly, because the timing was kind of suspect with that when I when we first started the webinar, I was talking about what Isaiah and I were working with with Udemy and using IE for doing the stuff. I kind of wondered if they finally decided to kill IE because of what we were doing, right? They might have seen what we were doing and said, hey, let's, you know, let's just kill, get rid of this thing, right? It's truly possible, right? Because it is pretty noticeable when something, because we were really hammering through the stuff very fast. Did anyone else have uh, anything they wanted to ask questions on or work on? Thanks for sharing that, Dimitri. Yeah, I'm trying to find out how to do something. So I have written a lot of hot strings and I want to be able to show it in a field because I have this GUI that we're going to be using. And I wanted to show the hot string without it writing out what it is. Is there a way to not, you know, so like uh, I have MH12 backslash and I want to show that, and then the agents know they can take that and put it into the ticket, and it will write everything out. Is that confusing enough? I got confused. <laughs> okay. So, so the I, agents, just clarify one thing for me. So, because I got part of it. The question to me, though, is the, the people that you want to inform, this is a, something you can type. They already have auto hotkey on their computers or whatever. They will. Once we okay. finish with, they're all going to get it. Okay. But in one of the fields that, that I have set up here, I wanted to display like MH12 backslash. And that's what they need to type in the ticketing system for it to write everything and do, you know, fill out the ticket for them instead of all copying and pasting and all that we do. So right now I'm doing MH12 and I write with a backslash. So they know it's MH12 backslash, but I'd rather it show MH12 in the actual backslash so they get, if nothing else, copying it and paste it into the, the ticketing system. Is that so even- Because you're using? manually typing it to show it to them? No, no, it's, it's gonna be, uh, I've created this GUI. So every time we get a call and we're working on a particular type of ticket, you would click on a button and then it would fill out all these fields in the GUI I've, I've created. But since we're not allowed to, to make it paste into the ticketing system, mm. they have to manually type in that hot string to make it fill out the tickets. So on one hand, they on the GUI that I've created, they can see what needs to go on the tickets. They just can't. They have to use that short little auto hot string to make it work. But there's no way you're going to remember 80 to 90 different hot strings. So I'm trying to see it where I can display it to say, basically, type this over here in this field, and it will create the ticket for you. Is it in, in just just because it would simplify things? Can you share this on your screen? Sure. Or is, 
Oh, sure. Okay. So I think that'll help clarify everything. Uh, how do I do Remember, that with this? With, uh, yeah, so this is okay to share though, right? Because Oh gonna... yeah, no, this is all my stuff. This is nothing. Okay. Uh, where do I go to share it in Zoom? Look for the one of the Zoom menus at the bottom, especially like in the middle of the screen, there'll be a toolbar in the green box that says- Share screen, yeah, I see it. And then after you click it, you have to pick which screen and then click yeah. something else again, because I half the time forget that one. There so we go. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. So this is the GUI I've created. And I've talked to y'all back in the past on this and kind of got, yeah. we moved from, from Tennessee to Florida. So I'm just not getting back to it. So right here where it says hot string, I wanted to show the actual hot string. But anytime I have it, it shows up in here. And let me, let me show you one other thing. How, how can I get to this screen? How can I get to a different screen? You have to share it separately. Uh, yeah, if you, can, you share, can you the share your whole screen? Right. When you, don't you do that normally, Joe? Well, it just depends if you shared a window versus the screen. Oh. So, you know, this is the GUI, but on my other screen, I actually have what I've written. And I don't know how to get you to that screen. Well, and, and, and change the way you're sharing. There we go. Okay, no. so now. We don't see anything it. different, though. You will now. Now, do you? Oh, yes, we do. Yep. Okay, so this is kind of this really, and I'm sure this is, there's so many easier ways to do this. Yeah, but no, if you this look, is very small for us. Right. Can you uh, zoom into it? If you hold down control and scroll up with your mouse, it'll zoom in. There we go. Much okay. Better. So if you look here, right here, this where it says uh, H MH12 with backslash, that shows up in a field on that other GUI that you saw. Okay. But what I wanted to do is- How is that is, being filled in? Say again? How is that being filled in? Uh, I down here, uh, this, let's see. Where is this? I think, and I'm trying to remember. That's, yeah. That's parent name. I'm trying to remember how I. Oh. So when you run, I have a button. Okay. And you would click like. Uh, minor the button here you know it creates a button okay no and then it fills out from here okay ci minor and that's all down further down so i don't know if i'm being even can you can you go to the g label minor yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to. Da, 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 da. Okay, I've gone too far. Where's it at? I'm trying to find it. This size, I it's I don't scroll through it this size very often. Or never. Couldn't you search for the word minor? Yeah, let's see. Just F3 will find the next one. F3 will find the next one? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, you're talking about function key, right? Or yeah. F3. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, I forgot there. I'll call function keys. Minor, Minor there it is. And then a colon. Just put in the colon. That should give you the label. Right. So colon. there, there's there's the, you know, there when, how it fills it out. Yeah. Okay. Can can you scroll so I can see it? Uh, do I need to scroll up or down or what? Because it's right in the middle of my screen. Oh, 
Yeah, now we're seeing it. Okay, so when you push, click the minor button. Yep. Uh, okay, you're using GUI control to fill in the content, apparently. Yes. I'm not seeing how that's triggering a, a, a hot stream. Uh, all I know is it goes, let's see, it looks for title minor, description minor. So when I go up here, you know, we have title minor, solution minor, steps. So this, when I, I see, I know so little when I've just done this by trial and error. Yeah, that's no worries. Uh, I'll start somewhere. Yeah, but like steps minor right here. And, you know, I really don't remember why it got set up this way. Other than someone said, try this and it worked. But here is the hot string. And so it will grab... Uh, this and place it into the hot string field I have in the GUI. But I'd like it to just be, you know, MH12 and a backslash and not with a backslash. Not spelled out is what you're saying. Not spelled out. Yeah, I just want to have the backsplash. And that way you can copy it and paste it into the ticket field. And then what it's supposed to do, it runs... But why can't you just change that line to have the, does the, does the backslash break it? Do we just need to escape it? Well, if if I what do you mean by that? Well, you, instead of having the word spelled out, if you were to literally change that, I mean, is that what gets put into it? That's what that is what's put into the field into right. my hot string field. But if I put a back if I just do the backslash when it runs the little script. It will turn that from, because what that says is uh, my health at Vanderbilt, and it will put that in that field, not M12. Yeah. yeah. It, because what it does, it runs this script. Could that be because the script thinks that he's typing that in? Yeah, but that's, that's the weird part, because... If GUI control is putting it in, it's not being typed. Hmm. So it shouldn't be able to trigger a hot string. Well, all GUI control is puts it into my, you know, my GUI. I have to go to the ticketing system and I have to type in the start field MH12. And then this runs, all this stuff runs in the ticket. You know, it kind of puts all that information in there. Uh, it's just, you know, on the, in the, in that's this like forward slash, what? That's actually a forward slash. Oh, okay. I'm just, uh, Don't worry about it. yeah, to the left of the shift key. Well, I was just thinking about maybe a backslash needs to be escaped where a forward slash might not. As he's putting it in an old fashioned variable, he shouldn't need to escape any type of characters and only the uh, back tick is, I See, think is. But like when it, here, let me show you an example. When I, when it gets put into this field, okay, and the minute it goes to, it puts in uh, the word patient or my health at Vanderbilt. I don't know why it's doing just patient there, but oh, it's trying to run the script. Oh, that, yeah, it runs the script. And I just wanted to show what you need to be in there to run the script. But the button you click, which one is that? It's the minor button or whatever. Yeah, so yeah, so I click the minor child button. Let, let me yeah. do something here. Let me see if I can. Can I get this to work? Uh, 
So what you have here, uh, okay. So here, here's, you know, here's what we do. We would, we get a call and we have a, a, a patient will say, you know, I'm, I'm calling in to get some help. Yeah. And, uh, and I would then go, okay, well, they say I have a child. I'm trying to get my child's account set up. And then this is everything that we need. See how that went? Minor child proxy form zero to 12. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that just fine, but I'm, I don't understand why minor child proxy from zero to trend. Why, how's that being filled in there? Uh, oh boy, this is tough because I really, other than, you know, I have, there's this button, okay? I'm not seeing a button. Uh, this GUI button right there, do you see? Oh, I'm on a different screen. Let me, let me go back to, okay, so right here, well, let me highlight that. Okay, so that's a button, right? I'm Add, not seeing it. You're not, are you, are you, are you seeing, still yeah. seeing the GUI or the... Uh, okay. You see, oh. Yeah, I think Jackie's screen just updates a little slow. Okay. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> so here, that. and, you know, GI minor, and so it goes down to... You know, is it here? Yeah, it goes down to here. Uh, may I say something? Sure. Isn't it maybe a solution that you limit your hot strings to a certain window to the program? How would I do that? Uh, there's a function, a function for, I think it's a- uh, uh, If one active. Yeah, hashtag if win active and then uh, RK underscore XE and then the executable, the name of the executable. That sounds way over my knowledge level. It, it's actually very simple. It, it sounded a little complex. I, but, uh, I understand the solution, but the reason why he is having the issue is something else. You might be able to quick fix it, but you will have the issue somewhere else if this is not fixed correctly because using GUI control to put some information in should not be triggering any type of hot spring. That it, it's right. I get your point. Something else is going on. So, so fixing it by fixating it to a specific window is, of course, a, a here and now pee in your pants kind of solution. Uh, but we should actually uh, fix why it is triggering the hot string for some reason, because it shouldn't be triggering the hot string. So this GUI control here, you're saying that should not trigger a hot string. The hot string, because here is where I understand, you know, that it says go to E10 hot string, and that's up there, and it places it in that field. And I'm sorry yeah. for confusing everybody, but I've literally been working on this like six months and I will some, try this and I tried and I force it to work. And, and Philip, we can keep working on this right now. Um, but I was going to say is, you know, at some point reach out to me and if we don't solve it right now, we'll spend a few minutes with you, you know, with just us and okay. we'll figure it out. Right. But I, I get Jackie's point of there is something else. I get why he's saying it shouldn't trigger it. Right, because it doesn't make a lick of sense, and, and I don't even understand GUIs, and I know that. <laughs> I have a quick question for you, Philip. The, does the if this is just telling them what they need to type, does that place where you're putting your command need to be a text field, or could you not just make that a label, and then you know, like you're just updating a label on the screen where it prints out the hot string? Uh huh. Here on. Uh, so let me, let me do something. Let me. 
So you're saying make this a label here? Right. And so where it says hot string colon, just at the end of the colon, just remove that field. And at the end of the colon, just put the hot string text that you want them to type. And you could have the code change the text of the label as necessary if they need to type different hot strings for different things. Yeah. So this, you're just saying this box when it be here. Right, right. And you can even change the label color to make it make it a little bit bigger, maybe make it a different color. So it stands out to them as this is what you're supposed to type. So you're saying instead of. Instead of having a text box there where you can type in something, right? All you're doing is showing them what they need to type. There's no reason for that to be a text box. Okay. I, I don't think based on your explanation. Uh, and so instead of having that text box, just make the word hot string colon, just have your code put a, uh, after at the end of the hot string colon, have it add the characters that you want them to type based on the current configuration of, you know, what their other selections are. And that would be done with the label command? The, the hot string is a label uh, object, actually, whereas the text box is a, you know, a text box object. So the label has a way to change from code that you can change the text that's on that label. Okay. Uh, and I'll ask Jackie to, to pitch it for me here now that I've got myself too deep. <laughs> um, Philip, I have another question. Why are you using hot strings? Well, because we're not, uh, because of our ticketing system, we have, I cannot, this cannot touch the ticketing system. Okay. If that does, and it has to be go through all the approval process. But if I just show everybody what the hot string is, they can type it in or copying paste it. There's no problem with that. But it just cannot touch that ticketing system because then Vanderbilt's going to demand that it gets goes through all their approval processes, which is, you know, like a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And is it maybe a better idea to uh, copy it to the clipboard and the, the user can just uh, control V inside it? <laughs> uh, if, yeah, if I could do that. Oh man, you can do that easily. <laughs> and then also the user will do it itself, but a little bit quicker. <laughs> yeah, yeah so if you tell them paste. Yeah, it's on the clipboard, paste when you're ready. And that's kind of why I want the the backslash there so you just copy paste in the field in the ticketing system and hit enter and it fills out the whole ticket instead of because we copying pasting maybe 15 different fields every time copy and paste copy and paste copy and paste and you're just so busy copying pasting it takes a minute to two minutes to create a ticket and i'm trying to get it down to like three steps You actually, and I need to write this down because I think it's a fascinating topic that we could probably discuss on a podcast sometime, Jackie, of when policies, you know, at your companies make things an, an incredible headache for you, you know, can you skirt them by kind of doing what his approach, right? It's technically they don't talk to each other. You know, we still have a human doing it, but it gets around spending a hundred thousand dollars or whatever, right? It's an interesting thing. Um, but yeah, uh, now I guess the thing is, um, Philip, when when they're pasting, like, is it pasting in one? E do you have separate hot strings for each? Yeah. Edit field on the destination well, of where they're I pasting. I have different. You know, um, I mean, because right now I have this type of stuff. So, like, if I want to put in the title, you know, user needs help with it, my health at Vanderbilt in Zoom. I type in ZM backslash, and that puts it into the title field, okay? And then when I want to, if, if it's an employee calling up, I type in VUG period, and it types out this. And if I need, they have a printer issue, then it's, that's this, that I type in the description field, so. We're, we're looking at the, your form. Oh, oh your okay. Uh, but but I, still, it's easy to follow with what you're saying. Yeah. Now, 
now and so i have each one of these can you see that now yes yeah like you know if uh someone calls in they need help with the web portal i type in this in the description it types sure. all this out yeah well my, I, my part of my question though was every time you have the users doing something is it all one edit field or is it possible that they have like three or four that they have to tab to or go to a different section there's yeah there's three fields that okay. we have to tap to and would that do you happen to know would that be breaking protocol if if we could use auto hockey to say you go in the first one and it fills it in and then it sends a tab to get them to the next one or are you already oh, doing yeah, that yeah see because at least if i think i understand what you're saying so like right here my health 12 backslash this types in the first field patient okay. yes. and then yep. it automatically starts filling out everything except for description where i click this copy button over here paste it in all the descriptions in there yeah so back to what dimitri had offered of copying it to your clipboard and pasting if this straight in that same approach wouldn't work in the same way because you're pasting one thing and it wouldn't the tabs wouldn't work <laughs> right um but like with what Jean Lalon mentioned earlier with QAP, there are ways where we could loop over it and still do like you're doing, right? But anyway, there's there's different approaches. I'm glad to see that that you that you can jump between edit fields. I was worried they would say, "Oh, that's technically you know you're breaking stuff." You know, no, breaking it's, it's if if a human can do it manually, yeah. I can do it through this. Okay. But since a human can't grab you know grab something from that website and copy it over then I can't do it. Hmm. It just means if, if I had a macro that I could click and it runs, you know, copy, paste, whatever, if it does it automatically instead of me having to use the mouse, that's acceptable. Hmm. But the minute I try to like grab a username from inside the website and copy it over, that's not allowed. I'd have to, you know, I can, it can only be through scripts. Hey, Philip. I actually had a question I wanted to ask today. And funny thing, it, it seems like there's a lot of overlap with your problem. So do you mind if I talk about it for a second? Don't and, mind at all. Okay. So what you're saying about policies before, Joe, this is a similar situation. Uh, we're doing a large uh, conversion of a bunch of databases for a very large insurance company. And it, their security is astonishingly complex. And uh, so we VPN into their network through, you know, all kinds of uh, cavity, body cavity exams, et cetera. But we get on their network. And then from there, we RDP from that VM that we land on to multiple other systems. Uh, and so... Uh, and then from there, we need to enter extremely ugly, complex passwords of like 30, you know, alphanumeric characters with puncture. It, it's horrifying. And we've got a bunch of these to do. And uh, because we're doing multiple layers of remote control there, the clipboard doesn't work. But we discovered that auto hotkey, if I run auto hotkey on my box and I type a, if I type a hot string, uh, my machine catches it and stuffs the characters through. So from their perspective, it is just a person typing it, right? Which is similar in a way to what Philip's looking at here. So what I was wondering is, is there a way to make, remember back in the ac early access days, people made those horrifying applications where they just put a button panel, you know, a panel with a bunch of buttons on it. Uh, could we make an auto hotkey GUI that had a, just a bunch of buttons on it each button would be able to stuff the, you know, type out the things that I want to type, but obviously we could, but the trick is how would you have a button panel on your machine that knows to send what it's supposed to be typing to another window? So in Philip's case, you know, he might have a button panel where he clicks a particular uh, button that represents the MH12 backslash command, and then it sends the things that we see here, but it, it knows to send those to a sp another specific window that he would probably have to 
select, I know there's a control send command, um, but maybe he would need to select the application from a dropdown of this is the one I want to send to right now, or I'm going to stop and see what you guys think. Yeah, and, and the hard part is it, it just depends on the program you're trying to paste into, right? And what's available for it. I mean, you can definitely activate the window, right? That, that, that's a start, but um, some things need to be more specific, right? And, well, I mean, taking his example here, because mine's really simple. It's just basically stuff a password in the current thing. So, so really taking his example is a much more complex example, the MH12. If, are you saying that if he had this tied to a button and he clicked the button and the first thing he did was activate the window that represents his uh, patient management system that he can't interface with. And then this script would continue on to send patients you know, and then sleep and send the inner the tabs, et cetera. Would that be sufficient? Is that how that would work? Is once the script starts, you activate the other window and then all the rest of these commands are stuffed into that other window? It, it's one way, <laughs> right? Like there's there's a Is lot the of ways. Way? <laughs> well, Anytime to me, and, and I'm not knocking what Philip's doing here, right? But generally speaking, you know, I don't like sending keystrokes, right? If I can get around it. Um, no, I agree but, with that. But sometimes you have to, right? And, and there's also your knowledge level and what you're, you know, what you've inherited. So I'm not trying to point any fingers or whatever. But um, generally speaking, they're the least reliable over, you know, over time, especially across computers and across systems, right? right. And then. And all the sleeps in there because you just have to kind of depend there's just on so many things that can go wrong <laughs> um yeah right, right. but there are a lot of ways i'm like i have that video where i talk about 17 different ways to programmatically connect to programs right and there's just there's a lot every program has a different way it now if you're talking about something so simple that like you know what i would do is go into the program click where you want to be then use like qap to pull up your menus and select the thing and it will send it to whatever you're in, right? You can even get the last active window and make sure it just reactivates it and send it. Well, that's okay. That's the thing that I was hung up on is how do you, because once you switch over to QAP, it has focus. And so how does it know where to send it, send its commands? But the last active window, I guess, is the trick there. It does, yeah. And QAP automatically kind of does that for you, right? Whether you're using the GUI or a hotkey or a hot string, it will know where you were when you, when you triggered it. Honestly, I bought that to help him out, but I haven't played with it yet. So I need to do that. It's a, it's a great tool. And then if you're interested, maybe um, we could do a one-off because, uh, you know, I'm trying to help uh, people understand how amazing it is, but it's, it's, it, the, I've actually asked Sean to reduce the functionality, have like a dummy version because there's so much functionality, um, trim it down, make it, you know, very simple and then ha have like another, tab where you can do advanced stuff right but um it's uh it's it's just a really complex tool that has a lot of functionalities to go into and for the most part i use it for mainly snippets or for launching you know urls and web pages or programs right it's, it's great for all those things but yeah so back to to philip's um thing getting back to his original thing i mean the first one i would which jackie i guess the question is somehow it's sending that hot string, right, Jackie? That's what's triggering it. Something is sending it somewhere. Yeah, uh, and that's, to me, it's, it's really, really weird. Uh, something else must be overrunning or somehow triggering a hot string. Um, it doesn't really make sense for that subroutine that we have seen to trigger a hot string. So unless something else is jumping to an actual hot spring or something else, I'm, I'm not really sure. Could we search his code for MH12 slash and see, I mean, if, if, if something's sending it, it ought to be in there somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah. I would, I would do the MH12, it should be unique enough. And that way, if someone didn't already comment, you know, uh, That's a good point. escape out or something, we may not miss it. So Philip, yeah. could you just do a search on MH12 and hit F3 and let's see all the times it occurs? Philip? Yeah, is that doing it? Yeah, I, yeah, can oh, you hear me? Yeah. yeah, we can now. 
Oh, so what's that right there? That's the actual. That that's what is. Uh, that is what I type in to do the description. So when, you know, we have to put in there what we did, you know, what we did to solve the issue. And I'll do MH12 period. Okay. And then that fills out inside the ticketing. So just search again. Okay. That one. Just hit find next there at the bottom. Yeah, then we don't miss any. It's, okay. Otherwise, it's easy to miss them. So there's the. There's that one. There's that one. And that's what the period. Yep. So one one three 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 there. Yep. That's it. Huh. Any chance you have another auto hotkey script running on this box? No. Okay. This is the only one I have running. In fact, I've, I've copied and pasted all the into one thing because when I I want to be able to you know compile it and send it to all the agents. All right. So it's just one. Right. Well, that was my best idea. Sorry. Yeah, I know that my solution is maybe not the yeah proper or best, but yeah, it, it, proper, it, but it would work. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so let's work on. It. He's right on it right now. Right. That's that's the one. That's the hot string. So we just need to do the the if when active in front of like on line five five two. Correct. No, I would do it before all the hot strings. So it's used for every hot string. Fair well, it depends on how the codes grow up grouped. But for this test, um, why don't we just do it here? Um, and then we can move it. Unless he's, are all your hot strings organized together, Philip? Uh, they're all, yeah, I have them all down here. Okay. Is that happen to be the first one or is there any before it? That I, that's just the first one. Okay. Well, then we're have we actually seen the issue. Huh, good point, Jackie. I understand. Your he, he wants to actually let's see it. Let's see it break. Oh, so okay. Instead of having with backslash, actually put the backslash there and let us see the. the... Okay. Uh, where is it? Hit find next again. Yeah. Forward slash is actually the thing it is. Okay, if I do that, okay. So let me let me share this other screen with you. So if I click minor child, see how it, for a moment there you saw uh, MH12 backslash and then it changed to minor child proxy form 0-12, hyphen 12. What, what? Hyphen 12. Do me a favor, do, do, do that again. Or Jackie, do you have an idea? No, it already did that when you had the backslash. Yeah. Take I thought it happened right when he moused over it. I'm wondering if when he mouses over it, it's actually triggering the reading of it or something. So I just, we, we already saw it shift to minor child zero to, to 12. Even when it was spelled out, right, Jackie? Forward slash though. Yeah, see, right now it's there, but when you're, you know, Joe's right. When I mouse over it, it changes. Yeah. So, so it's a different issue, apparently. I wonder. And, and what did it do when you didn't have the forward slash there? What? But when you just had the word with backslash, it would just it would just put in thing. it would I don't think so. I, I thought I had to I thought I saw it change too. Could you change Maybe it? Maybe it did. Yes. Let me...
Yep, it does it there too. So, yeah. So it's it something. String is triggering. It's something. No. Else. Now it's not, yeah. So it, it never was the actual hot string that was the issue. Uh, yeah. Something and different. I. No worries. This is how we learn, right? I mean, it's. What if you make that uh, field uh, read only? That's a very simple yeah. way to get to sort of a label. Are you, do you ever need to type in that field at all? Philip? No. So yeah, what if you um, made that field read only? Yeah, can you you can also copy from a read only, right? Yeah. So, but you, you can. Uh, read only or disabled. I don't know which would be. But this also doesn't uh, tackle the root of the problem. I no. think somewhere in your code. There was a line that uh, rewrites that value. Yeah. So a UI control set or something like that. And what what well, is you know what? actually pasting in there? It's post pasting something specific because we're seeing that right some, something we need to it. search for what was pasted not that's for the true. mh12 because it's not the mh12 that's, right. that's triggering it and that's yeah. what i'm doing that's now I, I did yeah. a search on minor child so there's this right here uh, let me go to let me go to my other screen mm -hmm. so i did a search on minor child and so here's one see that can you see that but that's in quotes, so I thought that's just short. That's just for the button. Yes, that's true. Yeah, search for it Thank again. You. And then I have this, and that's you know the title. Yeah. yeah. For. Minor child. That could be interesting. What's that? Well, the, the, the CI minor as a variable might be being used somewhere. It, just let me get a screenshot of it. Just, uh, okay. So yeah, that's the next thing but, to search for. Yeah. So go I ahead and keep searching. Just hit F3 again. And we're back. Is that where we started? I don't recall. If we yeah, I think it. that's where we started. So the now do a search for CI minor. Oh, so I spelled it wrong. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there it is. Oh, there it is. That's so that was. Yeah, so it's there, and then it was that other one was. So it's only in two spots. Okay, and then that GUI control display the content of variable CI monitor with it. So that's where it's. Why, yeah, why is that? That's where it's. Comment. Yeah, comment that wow. out. Right. Like didn't didn't it say way more than just minor trial? It, it had a specific string girl. Yeah. It said minor child proxy form zero hyphen 12 is the whole thing that displays in there once it. And it's not multi-line or anything like that. No. Philip, uh, can we just comment out uh, line 390 and then try to, to run the script? So you um, Yes. And now run the script. See what is it does. We don't see anything. Oh, way. let me let me let me put you <laughs> over to the. Sometimes it's easier to share your screen than you can just uh, uh, throw the window inside. See now when I when I comment that out. And I, I, can you see now? Can you see the, yeah. yeah. now it just, it's blank. Yeah. And if you press a, a button minus child. Uh, 
See, it puts it there. Yeah. You know. I, uh, oh. The, the hover is still doing something. If if, uh, if you click in another field, then the hot string field. If you click the minor child, and then just click in area or something, nothing happens. Yeah, if I go to solution, category, how to, you know. But isn't it, if you go and uh, click minor child. Okay. Now, and you click in hot string. And I then can't even you click. Click Control uh, A. Yeah. Is it true? And copy Control C. Is it is it truly an empty field? Yeah. Now it's empty. Yeah. We'll try pasting oh, it somewhere else just to confirm. See if I paste it. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't. No. It doesn't paste anything. I do. Because making a field get focus shouldn't be anything your script acted on. Is it even getting focus? Is it just is it happening when you just move the mouse across it, or are you clicking it, in no, it to make it? It. it I just. It. I no no. Just when I I mouse over it. So that's like oh, a so. hover or something. Also, what's that little line at the top of the field? Uh, I'm maybe Sorry, there right are here. two control fields there. I yeah. wonder if there's Is two it getting a redrawn stacked on top I, of each I, other. I think there's a field behind the other field. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I see. There's a little line. Oh. Yeah. So it actually has the hot string there, but when you mouse over it, it's giving another the one. Uh, the uh, next box. <laughs> Uh, Which is why it was so hard for you to kind of figure this out, right? And like, probably why it's changing in size. So where is and I, I think you're using a special option uh, for um, for a QEI control that that it will also react to a hover. Yeah. So let's do something. I'll quickly look for it. So I'm trying to remove that. So the E9 one and the E10 one, those are actually located at the same spot. So E9. So you need to go and find those two GUI uh, elements. So are you seeing the code or the the? I'm just remembering the names of your controls. Okay. So you're talking about here, E9, right? Again, my screen is updating too slowly, so I'm having a hard time of following along. But I'd say, yeah, the one here that's called E9 should be there somewhere. Right, right here. Right okay, there. I see it. And the one yeah. below that. Yeah, they're Are those two forced to be located similarly. Well, one's a text and the other's the edit too, right? Mm. Yeah, this is the text. It says hot string and underneath it is the the uh, the edit box. Well, it's gonna be but something with a Y in the, the nine hundred range, though, right? Mm -hmm. A text field. With yeah, but the rest of them are code. dynamic, but the last one is hard coded. So the, the reason that this is probably failing is because your GUI is not high enough to actually make room for all of them. So mm. because you have hard coded the last one, it's actually covering the E9. So, so the E9, which just has the Y plus five in its location, so if I did adding five to the previous one, uh, but because your GUI is uh, doesn't have room for that many controls, you are having them overlap. So try and change the last one to Y plus five. Let's see. 
see. Let me do one other. Ollie asked uh -oh. if you're using on message. Uh, everything disappeared now. Duh. <laughs> All right. Well, that's the end of the webinar. No. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, I think I see what's happening is I've got, I did some that you said were dynamic. And then down here, I just kind of forced it to show up. Right. Yeah. So you, you made some of them overlap by forcing right. a few of them. Maybe adjust the thousand to uh, something else by fifties or something so that they, sort of cascade and that way even if they overlap you can still see you know that there's two there more clearly okay yeah but now i don't see that little line so we can't see your screen again <laughs> yeah i'm just going back to so So yeah, that's that's definitely what it is. Because let me go. Maybe get, give the text something instead of having it at the thousand mark on the X, give it an eight hundred or something. Then we can actually see them. In... Yep, that's exactly what it is. There's another box yeah. underneath there, and it looks to be without a label or anything. Well, yeah, so if L you label? made like the issue or description a little smaller, you could have the hot string still come in at a plus five on the y axis, and then they'd still move uh, correctly. And so you had all of them dynamic. You just have to make either the description mm -hmm. or the issue so, box. Uh, now, are y'all seeing the GUI? On. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So now as I move to even, it's CI and then. So hit your minor child button for us. And we have copy, we have commented out the CI. So right now the CI oh, okay. is getting yeah. minor child proxy, whatever. Okay. So then, but the hot spring's not changing now, which is. Yeah, no, now it's not changing. Okay. That was the entire issue all the time. Yeah. I, I don't think I ever would have found that. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those things though, that you realize, you know, another thing is troubleshooting with at least one other person. It really helps. Yeah. Because Isaiah, who's you know he's he's being quiet right now because of his internet stuff, but him and I work a lot together. He is years ahead of me in programming, but sometimes he'll get stuck on something, and I'll jump on and we'll start talking through things, and I'll throw out the craziest stuff. We'll try this. We'll try that, and he's like, "Well, okay," and we we figure it out. You right. Know, it just you, it's so hard to troubleshoot your own stuff because you you have these assumptions and you don't question them. One of my database guys says that I have SQL Tourette's. <laughs> I just start throwing out SQL commands and something will stick. <laughs> yep. Yep. Awesome. Well, you think you got a handle on this? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. That, that Ooh, definitely awesome. is what was causing it. Cool. All right. Well, cause we're at the, we're past the end of the second hour. So um, I'm glad yeah. we finally figured out what was going on there. Um, so yeah, you should be able to throw in the backslash. Obviously, that was never an issue, right? So was, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. I'll uh, get these recordings out to everyone. I'm, you guys saw it, so now we deal. But um, I'll, I'll send out the resources here in a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. We'll see you all. Um, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Bye.